Hi there, my name is Claire. I'm 50 years old and I've got a daughter who's nine. I'm a single parent. I'm self-employed. And there's a couple of things I'd like to talk about in this video. But first of all, I really massive gratitude to you, Anna, for the work that you're doing. You know, your your videos are so professional. You can see that your, you know, your BBC training has has is going to some fantastic use. So brilliant. Thank you. Um, so a couple of things I want to talk about. I'm going to try and keep it quite quite brief. The first thing is my job in a children's nursery. I, I'm self-employed. I work in a children's nursery part-time um, as a support worker and I also work as a therapist running um, meditation retreats. So I'm obviously not running meditation retreats at the moment and I am furloughed from my job in the children's nursery. And the nurseries in Scotland have gone back, but I am not currently working there, mainly because in Scotland there's very strict rules. Employee employers, sorry, have been asked to ensure that all their employees are one hundred percent on board with the track, trace and isolate system, of which I am not. So my employer um, is, is very, very, uh, very kindly um, continuing my furlough pay until the end of August. Well, I make a decision. Well, I'm not going to be tracked and traced. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a cow, and I absolutely do not believe that the tests work. Um, so the problem that I've got, being a single parent, is the fear I have rather is if I get tested positive and my daughter gets tested negative, then what happens? Is she do social services come in? Do, does she get taken away? These are real questions that must be asked. Uh, I certainly know these things are happening in other parts of the world. And I think if people believe or think, oh, that's never going to happen here, that wouldn't happen here, they are really dangerously naive because yeah, this is it's very, very worrying. So I um I have not agreed to the track and trace thing, and I don't know if I will, so I may be out of a job there. Who knows? The other reason the other thing I wanted to talk about was my um one of the reasons that I'm actually into the whole truth movement is thanks to the BBC. Because I worked at the BBC in my 20s, I was a BBC News Pitch Editor for BBC National News, World Service News and uh, News24. And one of the reasons I went into that job was because I genuinely believed that I was helping to change the world um, for the better by helping to get out information, helping to expose the atrocities of the of the world, to, to tell people about the terrible dictatorships and wars and famines and goodness knows what else, um, in the hope that that would then change things for the better. And the turning point for me was really working in the uh, through the Bosnian War and seeing how Hang on a minute. This is another war, and we're just we're just we're just presenting the story over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And what's it actually achieving by reporting on it? And uh, one of the main things that happened at that point was I one of my main jobs was to edit the opening sequence to the the flagship program that went out on BBC World, and it was a, a collection of images of the war that, that was happening at the time. And I was working with a journalist and we had our head, total head of uh, BBC World programming come to us personally and say that she wanted a, a specific series of shots in that she'd, that she'd seen on a feed that for her perfectly exemplified the beauty of war. Now, those words have stuck with me for 25 years. The beauty of war. She actually said that. And the journalist who was working with me was equally as shocked as I was. And uh, we deliberately didn't put the shots in because um, we, we were so horrified by her term of phrase. So that kind of woke me up. I, I started to think, well, what is the point in me being here? Is this, is this propaganda or are we just regurgitating human pain and, and, and horror and terror? just for some kind of entertainment purpose, you know. So that was that was the reason that I, um, I made the decision to leave. And, you know, I've known about this, this, uh, the agenda for 20 years. You know, I've researched it for 20 years. And to see the ease at which the 
the whole thing has been rolled out with this current crisis is really, really horrifying. It's beyond horrifying. It's the stuff of nightmares. And I think while we still have some freedom to research what's going on, I absolutely, I'm imploring people to research it because a lot of my friends and my family all think I'm a nutter. Oh, just get on with your life. No, there will be no life to get on with if they get away with what they want to get away with. Um, but leaving on a positive note, I want to say that, you know, life is like uh, like editing. You know, you can choose, you can make your choice for which shot, which image, what which, which future you want. And you can focus on the negative or you can focus on the positive. And I really believe that the work that people like um, that Anna's doing and, and many other truthers out there is to help people uh, realise that they have a choice. They have a choice. Um, to stand up to the tyranny, to, to, to stand up to this craziness and um, and say no. And we take our, we take our, um, our power back and, and make the future that we want for uh, the entire human race. So again, massive thanks to you, Anna. Bless you.